Hey, what's up out there, guys? I hope you're all doing fantastic. Underwater is in theaters now, starring Kristen Stewart. So I figured it'd be a good time to look back at some other entertaining movies that coincidentally also take place underwater. Now, uh, I'm not going to be adding any shark or submarine movies. In this one, we're going to just be focusing on the suspense of being trapped underwater and all the mysterious monsters lurking deep in the oceans that inevitably will wreak havoc on a collection of characters. Now, personally, I've always been a fan of this subgenre. I think placing the story uh, at the bottom of the ocean when done right often can result in some very tense and uh, very immersive movies that can easily pull the viewer just right into the middle of the suspense of it all. They usually have uh, detailed practical sets that create a lot of uneasy manic claustrophobia. There's often some equipment damage that leads to the primal fear of drowning as water always makes its way into the plotline as a hurdle for our characters. And more often than not, added to the nerve-wracking confinement of this backdrop is a supernatural or monster element that will also come into play to test the survival instincts of the cast. Uh, yes, these movies are much like those set in space on expansive ships. A couple dynamics here and there can be swapped up and the result is pretty much the same. In my opinion, it's thrilling cinema. So let's get into my list of five entertaining underwater movies and these are in no particular order. Now, first up, I have Sphere from 1998, based on the Michael Crichton novel and directed by Barry Levinson, starring Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone, Samuel L. Jackson, Liev Schreiber, and Queen Latifah. This story centers on a team of specialists that are uh, called in when this mysterious ship is found at the bottom of the sea, buried underneath 300 years worth of coral growth. They travel to the ocean floor to enter and study this ship, and it results in some terrifying manifestations that will threaten the sanity and the survival of this entire team. And I think what makes this movie so much fun is the ensemble cast, their unique personality, and a plotline that really felt smart and inventive. This one doesn't focus on a central monster as the villain, but instead it uses the manifestations of the character's fears, and that's what really drives the suspense. It creates a good variety to the tension-filled moments. It adds uh, plenty of unpredictability as well. On a first-time viewing, it's really hard to guess where this story will go and which characters are going to make it out and I think that's what makes it so intriguing. You kind of learn and face things as the characters do and it really throws you into the world of the story with them and I think with the steady progression to the plotline of this crew boarding this mysterious ship that the tension really is felt. Each of the characters is pretty much there because of a certain field of expertise and I thought watching them bounce dialogue off one another to problem solve and figure out the mystery of the events taking place was a great time because it's very interesting and it felt fresh. I thought Stone Hoffman, Jackson, and Schreiber just had a great chemistry with one another. They all had differing personalities and relationship dynamics that created a nice uh, alternate layer of appeal to the main plotline. Another strong positive with this movie is that it has a nice balance of story and character development which results in nobody really feeling disposable. Everybody is given a purpose. It keeps the focus on the science, the problem solving, and the fantasy side of the supernatural which translates into a collection of scenes that I felt were as interesting as they were frightening. The intensity of the scenes continually ramps up and with a great cast, the emotional energy from the performances really are felt. I think it's going to be able to keep you on edge. It's going to have you thinking and it's always a good time when some underwater storytelling is what you're in the mood for. Next up, I have Leviathan from 1989, directed by George P. Cosmato, starring Peter Weller, Richard Crenna, Amanda Pays, Daniel Stern, Ernie Hudson, and Hector Elizondo. Uh, this story centers on a group of deep sea miners who, on a job, come across this sunken Soviet ship. Curiosity, of course, it gets the better of them. They venture inside of this ship and they unearth something that was possibly meant to be left alone in the deep sea. Something, of course, follows them back to their ship and this team of miners is going to have to fight for survival. Now this movie certainly does feel like a bit of a blend of Aliens and The Thing just set underwater, but I gotta say it works for what it wants to accomplish. It's relatively intense despite the formulaic progression and I think it's because the cast was solid. I think Weller, Hudson, Stern, and Krenna were all just fantastic for the needs of their roles. Their characters are blatantly cut and paste players, but I think their screen presence really infuses enough charisma and personality to create a group of characters you can really find some appeal in despite knowing that most aren't going to make it out of this movie alive. 
It's a formulaic movie with some flaws, but it's also kind of just fun to sit back and watch for what it is. It's um, it's dated in terms of the banter between the characters, and it certainly does borrow a lot of tropes from other movies, but it also has a great cast. It has a solid score from Jerry Goldsmith that's able to uh, give the recycled story beats a tense climactic vibe when needed. I think the practical creature effects hold up very nicely. Stan Winston came in for much of the creature design, and the gruesome look to the film's monsters kind of nostalgic to the era the direction was solid from cosmatos and i thought all the elements came together to create an immersive atmosphere for a simple 80s sci-fi action thriller set underwater and after recently re-watching this movie to prepare for this video it was still a good time it was still entertaining to just take it in for what it was count all the similarities between this movie and the others it borrowed from some uh, story elements and movie elements are much more blatant yet it all seems to fit together for the intention of the movie I think the ensemble cast make the routine characters their own. They make the characters work. Weller was a very capable lead. Krenna was awesome as well as the ship's doctor. It does try to do a little too much in the closing act and it makes a dumb decision with the primary character in the closing minutes to get that cute ending that they wanted. But regardless, the movie that leads up to it can provide some solid underwater suspense when that's what you want. Now this next movie is easily the biggest movie on this list, that being of course James Cameron's The Abyss from 1989. This one starred Ed Harris, uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, Michael Bain, Kimberly Scott, and John Bedford Lloyd. And much like Leviathan, this plot also follows a team that travels to the bottom of the ocean, this time to assist with a top secret recovery operation of a lost nuclear submarine. And once inside, they encounter an alien species, and as you can guess, all hell breaks. Loose. Now, I don't think there's any question James Cameron really pushed filmmaking to the limits and the result was a film that like no other truly brought the viewer underwater with the characters. To me, this movie kind of felt like Close Encounters of the Third Kind just in the ocean and I thought it was so very well made. The storyline is nicely layered. It has uh, just as much character to character intrigue as it does compelling science fiction. This is just a great film to really sit back and enjoy for an immersive trip underwater to discover the unknown. The special effects were cutting edge at the time and even today I still think they look fantastic. The technical side of this movie was absolutely cutting edge and impressive. The practical visuals were awesome. The characters are actually doing a lot of diving. Their helmets were lit up and with great performances, just the dramatic tension of each moment really feels authentic. It really hits home. Uh, it's been known that Cameron tested the limitations of his cast on many levels, but in the end, it does create human characters you really can connect with and it makes each layer of this storyline hit with impact. It's a movie that uh, so well is able to balance characters and story development it results in just a very smooth flow to the narrative as tension and pressure mounts on this crew it's a blockbuster movie that's underwater that's gonna take you on an emotional adventure that I think delivers just as much style as it does substance 1989 was a trendy year for underwater movies apparently because The Abyss and Leviathan both hit theaters that year but uh, they were not the only ones. The next one on this list also comes from 1989 and it's called Deep Star 6 directed by Sean Cunningham. This one uh, follows a crew aboard an underwater base that disturbs something on the ocean floor uh, during one of their explorations and yes it's a massive creature that's going to threaten their survival and the integrity of their underwater base. Now where Leviathan had a $25 million budget, Deep Star 6 had a modest $8 million to work with, and it does show. The visual effects were dated even back in 1989, and they're pretty comical to sit back and watch today. Uh, the cast is made up of much smaller names, but I do think they brought more than enough effort and energy to their roles to create some appeal for some otherwise very thinly written characters. My childhood crush and the first love of my life, Nia Peoples, is in this movie as well, and while she doesn't do too much. It's still a bonus for me in this movie. However, I do think though that Miguel Ferrer really came in with a charged performance that brought a lot of that needed tension as this group's wild card once all the shit hits the fan. It follows all the usual creature feature beats. It's pretty much a copy of Leviathan and the Abyss just coming out in the same year, but I do think it brings one element that makes it a fun movie to watch. That being the human element to the story, surprisingly enough. The creature is ridiculously bad on every level, but the issues in the roadblocks that are thrown at these characters does create a surprising amount of intrigue. The story does a good job of testing the limitations of the characters, their ability to handle stressful situations, their strength as a group, and it also explores at a very surface level 
people the mental breakdown from having to make difficult decisions and I think that's what makes this movie a good time to watch. And even though the underwater modeling and the creature effects are not very good in this movie, I gotta admit they're still kind of a bit nostalgic, at least for an 80s movie geek like myself. The final act is just no question, it's a template of Leviathan's closing act and it looks like something made from the late 60s or the 70s, but for a step back in time to see an underwater movie that shows effort from the cast, I think this movie is a good time and worth a watch. The final movie on this list is a little bit different than the others that we've talked about so far, that being Pressure from 2015 starring Danny Huston, Matthew Good, and Joe Cole from director Ron Scalpello. This story uh, centers on a group of workers that travel in a submersible down to repair a section of pipelines on the ocean floor. A massive storm hits, their connection to their ship is broken, basically leaving these four men stranded at the bottom of the ocean with little air or options at their disposal. This is a film out of the UK that I stumbled across a handful of years ago and I really enjoyed it. I think the premise was very simple. It centers on just this single predicament that created a natural uneasiness as it kind of just explores the effects that stress can have on different personality types. The script really uh, lays out character traits that actually do have an impact on the events in the story. You don't really know everything about them but you learn just enough to connect with them and to uh, pretty much understand where their decision making is coming from. A small all group of men in a motorless pot on the seafloor sounds like something that's a very tense scenario and with no communication to the surface the result is just a helplessness that can really lock you in as you watch. I think this is a movie that can very easily pull you into the stress of the plot and with great performances from Good, Huston, and Cole all the emotional layering the characters experience is easily felt while watching it doesn't try to do too much some could call it a little bit simplistic and a little bit formulaic but I think that's the bonus it feels realistic, the suspension of disbelief is pretty low, it results in just uh, delightfully unnerving tension. Will they make it to the surface alive? Which characters will never leave the depths of the ocean? It's hard to really predict where it's going to go and for me that really kept the curiosity and the appeal up. The settings and backdrops create a nice confinement that's very effective for the needs of the storyline. The visual appeal in this movie is very simple. It gives the movie a nice authentic atmosphere that I thought only added to the suspense of things. And if you are uh, looking for an underwater movie that focuses much more on the human element of just being trapped in the ocean and what decisions you would make and not just vicious monsters, then this certainly is a movie to seek out. It won't blow you away, but it's very capable. It's well made all around. And I I think it accomplished what it set out to. And that's my list guys, five entertaining underwater movies that I think are worth checking out for some ocean suspense. Now let me know down in the comments what some of your picks would be. I enjoy this genre and would love to hear some of your thoughts on some films that I may have missed out on. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. I'd love to talk movies with you guys, share it with your friends, and without question, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can never miss a video. Here are some links to some recent reviews just in case you missed them. All my social media links and the link to our official website are down in the description below, and I'll catch you next time.